Hi everyone, I'm Cesar Cano, culinary instructor from Houston, Texas, and today I'm taking over Taco Gear's YouTube channel with a new series that we're calling Taco Foundations. Welcome to episode three. So far, I've shared with you how to make tortillas using maseca. I've shown you how to make flour tortillas. And today we're stepping into the big leagues. We're gonna make what is called nixtamal tortillas. And I know what you're saying. You're like, Cesar, Cesar, what is nixtamal? Well, that's the name giving, given when you cook field corn, maize, in a calcium hydroxide solution or known as cal. And this is how Mesoamerican Indians have been cooking or make or the process called nixtamalization, which makes the field corn, the heirloom corn, edible and nutritious for us to consume. So that when you cook corn that way, that's nixtamal, which comes from the process, nixtamalization. Now, I said this was a big league, big boy recipe because it starts the night before you're even gonna cook your tortillas. The corn, the maize, needs to soak in this cal solution for anywhere between 10 to 12 hours. So it involves a lot of planning, it involves a lot of preparation beforehand, but all good food takes time. For this particular, particular recipe, we're going to be using 400 grams of heirloom corn. The variety you use is up to you. And for every 100 grams of corn, you wanna use one gram of cal or calcium hydroxide. So if I have 400 grams of corn, I need four grams of cal. And then you need enough water to cover the corn by four to five inches. All right, step number one is you wanna pick through your corn. Just like when you're picking through beans, dry beans, you wanna make sure there's no pebbles, no stones, nothing that is going to become a physical contaminant for your dough. So I like to pour my corn into a bowl and just kind of pick through it, see if there's any little pieces that are off color, get those out of there, see any pieces that are broken in half or just too thin. Like these two little guys, you know, they, they dried out. This one's actually kind of clean. I don't see any stones or pebbles. I'm just picking out like the little dry ones. They're eventually gonna be unserviceable. And that's it. After that step, what you wanna do, let me slide that over there, is already have your water boiling. And you wanna dissolve your cal with some of this hot water that you're gonna be cooking your corn in. So just add enough to make a slurry solution. I like to use a little rubber spatula to make sure it's dissolved. And this will make it easier to incorporate into the pot of water. It will reduce the chance, the, it will reduce the cal from clumping up when you pour it into your big pot of water. So once you've made your slurry, stir it back into the water. And I like to grab a little bit, rinse it out, get all that in there. Once it comes back to a boil, give it a good stir. And you're gonna see a transformation and an immediate transformation of color in the maize. So let me just show you what the maize is looking like now and then the color change that's about to happen. Pour it in. Give it a good stir. And one thing you're gonna be looking out for is you're gonna see some of the grains of maize or corn are already rising to the top. These are too dry, so what you wanna do is take a slotted spoon and just kind of fish them out. If they don't rise to the top, that means it's all good to go. And now, as you can see, it's an instant change in color because of the lime solution that we're cooking it in. Give it a good stir. Once you have your maize in there, you really don't want it boiling, so I'm gonna turn it down just so it simmers. And any little, little pieces that keep rising to the surface, I'm just gonna skim them out. And it's a set it and forget it kind of process. I'm gonna let this simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. And that's when I'll start checking if it's ready, if it, if it has been cooked all the way through. And it's similar to pasta. If you need a reference point, you're looking for al dente. So we'll grab one of the uh, maize kernels, 
bite into it and the center should still have a little bit of firmness to it. You don't want to overcook it where it just becomes uh, mushy. So we're going to let it simmer for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. All right, everyone, it's been 28 minutes uh, and now the maize kernels are done. And I'm going to show you two ways that you can test for doneness besides your time uh, variable. Because, you know, every, every kitchen, every stove cooks differently. So it might be 20 minutes, 25 minutes. In this case, it was 28 minutes. So what you want to do is grab one of the kernels and between two of your fingers, just kind of rub the kernel. And if you see this little bit of skin easily come off, that's sign number one that your maize is cooked through and ready to go. Second way to test if they're done is to just kind of bite into them. And this is the reference that I was making earlier. Similar to pasta, you're looking for al dente. So yes, you can bite through it, but it's not mushy. The center still has a little bit of firmness to it. And sure enough, we'll show there how the center is still white, still firm, but it, I'm able to bite through it without breaking my teeth on it. So those two signs, peel the skin between your fingers, bite into it, but the center is still firm. Because it has passed both tests, I'm gonna sh shut off the heat, and then this is the moment where it's gonna sit for until the next day, so 10 to 12 hours. And this is the process where the alkaline solution is uh, boosting the nutritional elements, the nutritional value of the maize. So when we consume it, it's good for us. It'll continue to soften the kernels even more overnight. And then tomorrow, I'll be, you'll be able to grind them using a, a molino. And then it will go from cooked kernel into nixtamal dough, ready for you to shape into your favorite tortilla, a tetela, a sope, anything that you want. You have your dough ready for that. So see you guys tomorrow. So buenos dias, it's uh, the next morning and we're gonna finish up our nixtamal dough. And the first thing you gotta do is rinse out your maize and we're gonna go do that at the sink. So you wanna pour out the water that the corn, the maize was soaking in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a rinse to remove some of the skins that we were talking about from the maize after being in, the, in this cal solution. How much you remove is kind of a personal touch. I like to go 50%. I want, I don't soak my kernels in water and shake them up. I just hit, I just hit them with a little hose. And what naturally falls off of them is what I'm going to go with. But I like keeping some of that skin because it gives my tortilla some texture. So I just give it a quick rinse, shake them around. Other recipe videos, other ones will tell you to do that until the water runs clear. You can do that as well. Like I explained, I keep some of that for texture, for color, and just it's a personal choice. So after this point, quick rinse, we're gonna go grind our maize and make our tortillas. We're almost there everybody. Second to last step is to grind your cooked corn and the method that I use is just this hand cranked Estrella grinder, been used forever. And you put it from the top and then you cut And then there. Time to time, just push them down into the slot so they can keep getting ground. And you can notice there's some moisture already in it, but you'll have to adjust the final amount of water to make your dough. Actually, this one came out pretty good. It's nice and pliable already. Um, with these grinders, because they're hand, hand cranked and they don't grind it finely the first time, so I'm going to run this batch a second time and then I'll have the consistency that I want. Add a small amount of water to help it run through and do the second grind. For this one, you're going to have to really push the dough into 
the patio. All right, everyone, we're almost there. Um, I, I like this recipe because it is so involved and then, you know, this is the way it's been done for centuries. So for me, it was something personal to learn how to make tortillas this way. Um, one of the final steps is to adjust the consistency of our masa, of our dough. Um, and what I do first is grab it. Okay, it's holding its shape, but I want it to be a little bit stickier just so it's not crumbly. And to do that, I take some water in my hands. I always start with a little bit because it's always easier to add water than to take away. So just naturally, whatever water sticks to my hands, that's how I start kneading it into the dough. And what I'm looking for visually to know if I've reached the consistency, the ideal consistency for this masa is two things. When I move it around my bowl, I want it, I want it to leave streaks of masa around the edges. And it's starting to do that now. So I'll just need a little more. And then the second test is I put it in my hands, roll it around. And same thing, I would want a nice thin film of masa to stick to my hands. It's not there yet. So I'm just going to keep adding water until I get to that point. So grab a little water, sprinkle some on top. All right, we're getting there. Look at my hand now. And look at the side of the bowl. It's getting nice and sticky. This process will take you anywhere from three to five minutes. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm up to act more on the cautious side and rather add water a little bit at a time until I get there. Instead of taking the risk of just pouring an unmeasured amount into my dough, because then that would make it too, run too runny, too watery, and not suitable for shaping or pressing into tortillas. There we go. Now we're getting there. My hand is my two visual signs, the side of my bowl. That'll be the last bit that it needs. Yeah. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. Good play dough consistency, sticky, but not to a point where it doesn't hold its own shape. So now we can portion these out, press and cook. My next time dough has been portioned, now it's time to press it. Just a quick reminder, whenever you're using a tortilla press, make sure you use um, two layers of plastic to actually press your tortillas. Don't make the messy mistake of trying to press uh, your tortilla directly into the surface of it because then it's not going to be able to release and you're going to have a giant mess on your hands. So just take a quart size um, Ziploc bag, cut it into, I don't even, I'm not too picky about the uh, being a perfect circle, but I just wanted to cover the majority of the surface area and that way I can press my tortillas and release them easily to go into my comal. So I've been roll them into a dough on top, bottom one plastic sheet, on top the other one, and then Nice and press. Check that it's even, even thickness throughout. If you need to rotate a little bit and give it a light pressing, that's good too. Sometimes, even with a plastic, it'll stick. So a good way to make sure your tortilla is going to release is to remove one side, flip it over to the other side, and take that plastic off. And that way, it is ready to go into your hand. And now we just gotta cook it. Finally, time to cook your tortilla. You wanna preheat pre your comal anywhere from four to five minutes, a medium high heat, and then just release your tortilla, slap it on there. It's gonna take about, you know, a minute or a, a minute. I do 20 seconds, 30 seconds per side. 
The first side is always crucial. My reference point for um, when I'm teaching this to my students is just like a pancake. You're looking for the edges to dry out first. And then once you start uh, noticing that, you pick the one of the sides that will kind of curl up and that'll be your handle to lifting it up. So here I'm starting to notice some of the side, the ends of it are drying up. It's still too soon, but you know, it's only been 15 to 20 seconds that I put it on the comal. And then I, not, nope, I'm gonna wait. This is, the first turn is the one where you have to be the most patient, because if you try to, release it before it's ready you're going to tear your tortilla so hopefully you guys can notice how now they're starting to lift up and curl and i just kind of slowly pick at it there we go first turn um, if you don't have a comal you can definitely use a non-stick skillet um, but when you use these cast iron or clay comales what's really beautiful about the finished product is that you're going to get this nice char where it's, sometimes it's difficult to get char um, with non-stick uh, material, non-stick coating, you know, um, it's beneficial because your stuff doesn't stick, but sometimes you want it to stick. So we'll just wait. You can move it around. I like to press down on it sometimes. And it'll be another 30 seconds. I'll do my final flip and then you're ready to enjoy. Visual signs, you're just looking for the dough to not look moist or wet anymore. Um, and that's pretty much your indicator that you are ready to go. Got one last final flip to get this other side. I like to press down, make sure everything gets cooked. And then whenever you're ready, just transfer over to a plate and the sign that you did it all this entire process correctly. You should put your tortilla in your hand and you should be able to roll it smoothly into taco form. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And whenever you make these tortillas, make sure to tag me on my Instagram, which is Take underscore sun. I'd love to see what, how your tortillas come out. And please make sure to visit my website, takesan.com, where you'll, have, you'll find ingredients, measurements, and, this, and links to this video so you can follow along. Make sure to join us next week when we're going to be making some delicious vegetarian tacos using both flour tortillas and nixtamal tortillas. So we'll see you guys next week. Adios.